assalamu alaikum class uh, today in this uh, lecture we will uh, learn and discuss about the external structure and locomotion in amphibians this is the course of uh, animal diversity 2 and its course code is sol 2113 in this slide we will discuss about uh, the skin of uh, amphibians as amphibians are included in the vertebrates therefore uh, the skin of amphibians uh, uh, as like vertebrates protects them from microorganisms ultraviolet light desiccation and mechanical injury the skin of amphibians is also used in gas exchange temperature regulation absorption and uh, storage of water The skin of uh, the skin of amphibians have two basic types of uh, cutaneous glands uh, which are present in the skin of amphibians and these glands are mucus glands and poison glands uh, these are considered as the skin gland of uh, amphibians as uh, the skin gland of amphibians are highly glandular uh, so their secretions protects the body these glands keep the skin moist and prevent it from drying they also produce sticky secretions these secretions also help male to attach with female during mating it also produces toxic chemicals that discourage the predators the skin of many amphibians is smooth but some epidermal thickenings produce warts and claws it makes the skin sand papery the de deposition of keratin or the formation of hard bony areas produces these warts and uh, the important point about the amphibian skin is that uh, the skin of amphibians lacks scales feathers and hairs and uh, these are the functions of uh, skin gland of amphibians uh, like uh, i already have told you that it protects uh, the body of amphibians uh, uh, because uh, the skin glands of amphibians uh, keep the skin of amphibians moist and prevent it from drying uh, there uh, for uh, uh, the skin of amphibians also produce uh, sticky secretions and these secretions uh, help male to attach with females during mating and they also produce toxic chemicals uh, which deter the predators or prevent predators from attack this uh, slide shows the vertebral uh, vertical section of uh, skin of a frog and uh, the upper one or above uh, portion of the slide uh, includes the epidermis or the outer portion of the skin of amphibians and uh, below the epidermis uh, is uh, the mucus gland and the other gland is the poisonous gland which is uh, present inside the connective tissue of the amphibious skin and uh, there lies uh, dermis and uh, subcutaneous uh, subcutaneous layer below the dermis uh, which includes adipose tissue and lymph uh, spaces etc now we will discuss about the sport and uh, movement in amphibians in this uh, we will discuss about the axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton of amphibians that provide support and protection The axial skeleton is the part of skeleton that consists of the bones of the head and trunk of a vertebrate. So the axial skeleton includes the skull and the vertebral column. The skull of amphibians uh, is uh, flattened and it is uh, relatively smaller. It has lesser bony elements than the skull of the fishes. These uh, changes lighten the skull thus body can support it easily. 
there are certain changes in the jaw structure and musculature therefore the terrestrial vertebrates can crush prey in the mouth and uh, the vertebral column of amphibians uh, provides support and flexibility on land it supports the weight of the body between anterior and posterior paired appendages every vertebra of amphibians has a supportive process called zygophysis which prevents the vertebral column from twisting the articular processes or zygophysis uh, of a vertebrae are uh, projections of the vertebra that serve the purpose of fitting with an adjacent vertebra the actual region of uh, contact is called the articular facet the current diagram is showing the axial skeleton of uh, uh, an amphibian which includes the skull and the vertebral column as uh, i already have told you that the skull of amphibians is flattened as you can see clearly in this diagram that the skull of amphibian is flattened and uh, relatively it is a smaller in size and it has lesser bony elements than the skull of fishes and therefore uh, these are the differentiations that uh, lighten the skull of uh, amphibians and uh, therefore the body of amphibians can support it easily and uh, there are certain uh, changes in jaw structure and musculature as well and the vertebral column of amphibians is also shown uh, here in the diagram and uh, which uh, also includes the supportive processes known as zygophysis that helps to prevent the vertebral column from twisting amphibians also have a neck the first vertebra is a cervical vertebra which moves against the back of the skull it allows the head to nod vertically the last trunk vertebrae is a sacral vertebrae uh, this vertebrae attaches the pelvic girdle with the vertebral column and uh, there is also a sternum which is present in the anterior ventral trunk region it supports the forelimbs and uh, protects uh, internal organs it is, it is reduced or absent in the aneurysm this slide shows the typical vertebra uh, a dorsal view of uh, bufo and rana species of uh, amphibians and uh, you can see here that uh, the pre zygophysis and post zygophysis which are the processes of the neural arch of a vertebra by which it articulates with an adjacent vertebra a pendicular skeleton of uh, amphibians the appendicular skeleton is the portion of the skeleton of uh, vertebrates which consists of the bones that support the appendages the appendicular skeleton includes the skeletal elements within the limbs as well as supporting shoulder girdle, girdle pectoral and pelvic girdle as the exact origin of the bones of uh, vertebrate appendages is, is not known Uh, however similarities are present in the structure of the bones of the amphibian appendages and the bones of the fins of ancient sarcopterygian fishes therefore it is suggested uh, suggested that homologies uh, are present between these two groups because uh, they the joints of uh, uh, like uh, shoulder hip elbow knee wrist and ankle are similar in these two groups these joints allow freedom of movement they also develop better contact between the body and the substrate and uh, the pelvic uh, girdle of amphibians consist of uh, three pelvic uh, bones uh, which are the ilium ischium and pubis these bones uh, firmly attach pelvic appendages with the vertebral column these bones are important for support on land tetrapods depend on appendages for locomotion they do not depend on body wall for locomotion therefore the body wall musculature is reduced in tetrapods and appendicular musculature has become strong there are uh, different uh, modes of locomotion uh, observed in amphibians like salamanders have unspecialized form of locomotion it is like undulatory waves uh, in fish 
Terrestrial salamanders also move with the help of limbs and body movements. They show alternate movement of appendages and muscle contractions, which bends the body into a curve. This curve moves the limb forward. But in case of sericelians, they show an accordion-like movement. In this case, adjacent body parts push or pull forward at the same time. But in case of anurans like frogs and toads, the long hind limbs and the pelvic girdle of anurans are modified for jumping. The dorsal bone of the pelvis, uh, that is ilium, extends anteriorly. It is attached to the vertebral column, as uh, I will show you in the next slide. Their urostyle extends posteriorly and, and attaches to the pelvis. These skeletal modifications stiffen the posterior half of the anurans. Long hind limbs and powerful muscles are used for jumping efficiently. Pectoral girdle is attached to the skull and vertebral column by elastic connective tissues and muscles. These connective tissues are used as shock absorbers for landing on the wall. This slide shows the skeleton of a frog. As the frog's body is built for jumping and swimming, frogs have long, strong back legs with extra joints so they can fold up close to the body. Tails would get in the way when jumping, so frogs do not have one. They have a short backbone with a large hip bone to support their powerful leg muscles. The hip bone forms the hump seen when a frog is sitting. Frogs' heads are broad and flat, as you can see in the diagram. Uh, therefore, they have big sockets for their large eyes. They have no neck, so they cannot turn their head. Now the question arises why body wall musculature is rarely used in amphibians. The answer of this question is very simple that because amphibians uh, do not uh, depend on their body wall for locomotion, Therefore, the body wall musculature is reduced and appendicular musculature has become strong. Nutrition and uh, digestive system in amphibians. Uh, there are various uh, types of foods uh, that are consumed by amphibians. Like most adult amphibians are carnivores. They feed on different invertebrates. Some anurans uh, like frog and toads uh, have more diverse diet. For example, a bullfrog, which is shown in this slide, eats small mammals, birds, and other anurans. The prey size and availability determine the type of diet. Most larvae are herbivorous. They feed on algae and other plant matter. Most amphibians locate their prey by sight. They simply wait for prey to pass by it. Olfaction plays an important role in prey detection in aquatic salamanders and sericelians. This slide we will discuss about the mechanism of feeding. As uh, you all know that uh, some amphibians uh, actively hunt for food, while others prefer to lie in wait and ambush their prey. Many have a long, strong, sticky tongue which they use to catch their prey. Unusually, the tongue is attached to the front of the mouth instead of the back. Many salamanders are unspecialized in their feeding methods. They use their jaws to capture prey. And urans and planthodontid uh, salamanders use their tongue and jaws in flip and grab feeding mechanism. In this flip and grab feeding mechanism, a true tongue is first seen in amphibians. The amphibian's tongue is attached at the anterior margin of the jaw. It folds back over the floor of the mouth. Mucus and buccal glands are present on the tip of the tongue. They release sticky secretions. When prey comes within range, an amphibian flicks out its tongue. The tongue turns over and the lower jaw is depressed. The head tilts on uh, its cervical vertebrae. The tip of the tongue traps the prey. The tongue and prey are flicked back inside the mouth. All of this happens in just uh, 0.05 to 0.15 seconds, a very short span of time. 
The symbiont holds the prey by pressing it against teeth on the roof of the mouth. The tongue and other muscles of the mouth push food towards the esophagus. The eyes sink downward during swallowing. They also push the food towards the esophagus. This slide clearly shows the flip and grab mechanism of uh, amphibians that how they capture their food. This uh, slide shows the step by step mechanism of uh, grabbing of uh, food by amphibians. As uh, you can see there that uh, when any prey comes within range an amphibian flicks out its tongue as shown in this uh, diagram. The tongue turns over and the lower jaw is depressed. The head tilts and uh, on its cervical vertebrae. The tip of the tongue traps the prey. The tongue and prey are flicked back inside the mouth uh, as uh, you can see in the last uh, diagram of this slide. All of this happens in a very short uh, span of time and the amphibian holds the prey by pressing it against the teeth on the roof of the mouth.